Hey everybody, Zong gets a 134 here. Average Joe Squad here. And welcome to a very late episode of Remember the Hyphen, the show where we look at video games, comic books, and everything in between. So yeah, sorry about the long time between. Uh, as you can tell in the back here... Uh, the weather has not been exactly cooperating with yeah. us. We've actually... We've been... This episode has been delayed like at least two days worth to filming, but just because... Uh, if you know anything about our state's weather, good old Pennsylvania, uh, our weathers are shit. With a capital S. Yeah, this is, right now our, our state is going through its yearly uh, cosplay of the planet Hoth from Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, pretty much. Um, actually, as I'm talking, an ad ad is walking across the walking across the parking lot here. Digitally remastered too. Yeah, I never liked uh, how the ad ads uh, look like bad guys. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, but we're here now, and we are going to start. Uh, this actually, a, a, it's more delayed than that because this is what we were going to film before the whole Arkham announcement we did a couple of uh, weeks ago. Yeah, that that got delayed primarily because uh, well, because we I, want... I dropped the ball and didn't read the script in time. Well, then I would have I would have done so anyways because I wanted to strike while the iron was hot about that. Um, but yeah, so welcome to a new segment uh, for the show, which uh, we decided to call the Raiders of the Lost Script. Don't look at it, Adam. Don't look at it. <laughs> uh, I actually saw Raiders on TV a couple days ago. Honestly, good shit. Um, so favorite, yeah, that's my favorite of the Indiana Jones movies. So, basically, you know, whenever I I get a wild hair up my ass, or you know, <laughs> I find new. Basically, him and I are going to look at scripts and treatments that didn't get made. We're gonna we're gonna have to look at. Uh, did, did we know if it, there was ever a script for a uh, Superman Lives? Oh, I think there is because um because Kevin Smith did it. What we'll what to, we'll to look we'll if to not that. he has at least has a treatment. What we'll what to, we'll to look <clears> up and maybe if we can do um, that, but that's beside the point. Because I always love when like podcasts and stuff talk about stuff that didn't get made or and, like one of my favorite things is talking about like what could have been. Yeah, <clears> like I I've actually always been the same for a while. Um, some of my favorite stuff is um kind of connecting this is is like stuff like lost media yeah. or oh, yeah. stuff that was canceled like um. Something I'm still salty about is the cancellation of Knights of the Old Republic 3. Oh, yeah. Back in the mid-2000s, due to the Lucas, LucasArts bankruptcy. Yeah, no, I, 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 could, I could believe that. Um, still, still salty. You the, know, old, like, the Old Republic MMO don't count. Then I always loved when Kevin Smith talked about his time on Superman Lives just because of how much of a shit show that was. Well, and you could really tell that he he gave it his all. He even says in the, in the documentary, which I watched um, about yeah. a month ago. I actually caught it one night when I was... I was eating pizza and needed something to do while I was eating. But um, he even talks about it. He's like, I knew I wasn't going to get it, so I just went all out with it. Oh, yeah. And he's like, I actually wrote a whole script around just getting a Batman cameo. <laughs> um, speaking of, uh, boosting a podcast that I that I, I think everyone should watch if they like this, uh, Fat Man on Batman, or uh, I think it's called Bat Fat Man on Batman Beyond now or something like that. But, like, I, I love Kevin Smith st when he talks about, like, the industry and such. It, it's He does a lot of good insight stuff. When he, he knows his shit, basically. And there's an episode where he got high with Grant Morrison. There's also an, he's also, uh, he got extremely high on his episode with Joe Rogan, so uh, check that out if you're, if you're a Rogan <laughs> fan. Oh, that, that had to have been a... I love me some Joe that, Rogan. That had to have been a treat. Um, well, it's, like, it's like that night they got Alex uh, Alex Jones <laughs> high on there, and, and Joe's like, I can't have him back on the show because uh, <laughs> he lost his mind. Oh, what? The guy that screams about frogs getting turned gay? No, listen, to me, listen man, I got, the money. I got the money! <laughs> listen to me! He... <laughs> What you tell me the paranoid schizophrenic when, when, when listen when he does the listen to me thing, it is the funniest shit I've ever seen but, uh, in my life. But anyway, it sounds like he's like a he sounds yeah, like he's a I, villain no, I, in a you, movie. Like listen to me, listen to me, I got the money. <laughs> like, he should have been Joker in my opinion. Oh my Christ, <laughs> Alex Jones is the Joker. You know we live in a society. <laughs> no, he could have been he could have been Joker's son, Anarchy. <laughs> They're both crazy skit. Crazy, <laughs> crazy nut, nut jobs. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, Zong gets you 134. <laughs> Normally, you're the one who's not who's not willing to call people out on your podcast. It's Alex Jones. I don't give a shit. <laughs> but we're not here to talk about that sort of I'm thing. I'm gonna be honest, man. We live in a society where they're trying to turn the frogs gay. <laughs> That's exactly the kind of shit yeah. that would go on in that movie. But uh, so. Our first episode, and this has kind of been something we've been kind of spitballing for a long time. Um, and I, I figured we could start with one that I feel like no one's really done, so it'll be good for us to kind of get it. Yeah, I don't really think I've ever seen a video about it. No. I mean, I'm sure there's a couple out there, but nothing that's really like. So you may you me. may remember this character in her most 
uh, her debut breakout role in uh, two seconds of X Men: The Dark Phoenix, where she's uh, she's a party she's a party singer uh, that dresses like a disco goddess in the in the nineteen nineties. Dazzler, you know that character Marvel created to get on the disco trend. Yeah. Who had her own record company? Her own record. Wait, she had her own record. What? Yeah, no, she had a record. I'm gonna have to go home and look this up. I actually yeah, did not sure know she had a record. Um, so it's like the Spider Man Holiday album. Well, you know, it's like that character Nightcat Stanley Green. <laughs> um, so for those of you who don't know uh, Dazzler, even though I, I just made that the whole thing, Dazzler was a was a mutant character created so that Marvel could uh, make music, and as we're going to see here. I want to say her debut is during the the Dark Phoenix saga, like right at the beginning of yeah. it. Yeah, um, she was also. I think she also premiered in a story called "God Loves Man Kills," um, where Cyclops tries to recruit her, or like someone tries to recruit her to the X Men. She's like, "No, I, I'm, I'm, I, I just want to sing and make money." That's during that's during Dark that's <clears throat> during Dark Phoenix when that okay. happens. Well, I I could have sworn they also do it again in uh, "God Loves." They Man they Kills. probably do. Um, I just remember I remember it being a, a big part part of. Uh, the early parts of Dark Phoenix prior to uh, Jean getting kidnapped by yep. the Hellfire Society. But yeah, and apparently, according to Jim Sh- Shooter, as I, uh, uh, basically, they were contacted by, uh, was it Casablanca? Yeah, records? um, because basically, like, the, um, their VP in business affairs, uh, Alice Donenfeld, proposed that they create a singer, a singer, a superheroine slash singer. And basically, she was hoping that it would um, it would help them break out against one of their greatest competitors, the Archies. Well, and just to get a little bit of background, diving into uh, my music knowledge here, um, for those who don't know, Casablanca <clears throat> Records was a very, very big label in the seventies. Um, you might know them as uh, Kiss's record label, where oh, wow. they yeah they they had Kiss. Oh, so this is why um, they made those books. Same with, with Kiss. Do- uh, Donna Summers is because they were all oh, signed wow. to uh, Casablanca Records. Oh, that explains a lot. Next time you come over, I'll have to show you some of my Kiss records because, like, I actually have some of the the original Casablanca issues. Um, there were a couple. There was did, a lot of other artists that were on it that were did, very, very big in the seventies. It was one of the, probably the biggest nineteen seventies record labels. Did were they the reason the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band movie got made? I I actually think because. I don't think so, but okay. I would be very surprised if it was on anything other than Capitol Records because Capitol Records owned all the rights to the <clears throat> Beatles. Because. Well, I, I'm only saying this because all these char- these people you've mentioned had a Marvel super special based either on like a movie they did or got to make their own like where, where Kiss made their own Marvel comics where they put their blood into the ink. Yes, that is that is because of this relationship between Casablanca and which, uh, fun fact and Marvel, which is a very weird, very seventies uh, thing. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band movie, the comic adaptation, is like one of the rarest Marvel comics you can find because it only was made in France. Or like in, in like the, the movie European. sucks. That's why well, I watched uh, well, it. The movie sucks. Well, yeah. Save yourself the trouble. Just watch the Aerosmith cover of "Come Together." From Come it. together right now. Which I actually think, um, reading Aerosmith's biography back in high school, I'm pretty sure they were high out of their minds when they did that. Like, because you got to. I'm pretty sure everyone was high at that. Well, movie. no, like even more so than anybody, because you have to remember this is the height of Aerosmith's popularity. So, like, right. this is. I don't know if you um, know a lot about Aerosmith. Um. Aerosmith's uh, lead t- lead pair, um, Stephen Tower, the singer, and Joe Perry, the guitar player, they were the, like the '70s equivalent of Mick Jagger and Keith Richards. They were called the Toxic Twins. Okay, these guys were doing drugs like it was going out of style. So it, they were they were extremely extremely screwed up there when they, when they made this movie. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and basically, they. They created this character. Uh, one of the basically Jim Shooter had Tom DeFalco and John Romita uh, Jr. Tom, Tom DeFalco coming in again. Well, to be fair, Tom like was like really like his his prominence in Marvel at it, it, the company was eighties and nineties. Yeah, well, I, I well started in the late seventies, early eighties. Which um, again, I I will defend Tom DeFalco. Oh no, I Tom love, DeFalco does I love, good I love work. Tom's work. Um, and this is also probably peak John Romita Jr. back when he could actually draw. Yeah. Okay, okay that's that's harsh to say. Like his his yeah, him, him and him and his his down years is still better than his son's work, in my opinion. You, you, no, this is junior, not senior. You heard me. Well, no, I know, but I was talking about junior, and I didn't want did, anyone. Well, I did. Did I didn't I, want anyone to get confused because we. Did I, I stutter? Well, no, I, <laughs> I, I get that. My 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 point is, we're talking about junior, and I didn't want to confuse anyone because like you. What about junior, junior? Oh, <laughs> trying to be the son, trying to be the junior, junior. Oh God! 
apologies to because I, I like both Hermitas. No, I record. do too. I'm just fucking around. <laughs> to be fair, I, I still like his his low his lesser years, but um, but basically she debuted in um oh, where was it X Men number one thirty. Yes, yeah, so that would have been right around the beginning of the Clone Saga because um or at least the trade that I have. The paperback one, not my big hardback omnibus that I recently bought. Yeah. The softback omnibus of Dark Phoenix, that is, I want to say, the second issue that is in there. And if not, it's the first one. Yeah. And so basically, um, they met with with Neil Bogart of Casablanca Records, and basically, you know, like they were like, "Yeah, no, we want to, we want to have something like the Archies because apparently that made a lot of money." <laughs> I, but basically. What happened next was that they wanted to not just have Dazzler be like like they wanted Dazzler to be the like the 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 main thing, even though Dazzler was only in a handful of appearances at the time. Uh, part- particularly one I know of is when she was turned or she was being tortured by like some villain. I think it might have been the Living Laser, but I can't remember. Is that- um in Spider in one of the issues of Amazing Spider Man? Um, this is slightly off topic. Has there ever been an instance of that where we have a movie for a character that is very? obscure slash not really in any hasn't really been in that much stuff prior to the movie um, do, we, do we have any modern day similarities we can we can pull from to kind of compare that I think, the, to? I think the only one you could probably argue was like spawn it was because spawn was only like a year old when they made his movie and like and but but like because he he blown out had blown up so much like they literally yeah. were like let's strike while the iron's hot I mean, um, we, we could have used Namor, that Namor movie that never got made, but at the same time, Namor had been around since the six, oh, since yeah. long, Na- Na- long time. Namor is one of the oldest. Yeah, the so oldest, that, that's not even really a fair comparison. Uh, Namor has been around, I think, as long as Captain America. Actually, yeah. So it, it, that's not that's not a fair comparison at all. Um, I maybe uh, uh, I don't know, but I, I would probably say Spawn is the one that, that comes to mind. Would maybe Howard the Duck, Electra, maybe. No, Electra was Electra was in the eighties. Frank Frank Miller okay. made her in the eighties. I, I couldn't remember if it was eighties or nineties. I'd probably say the other closest one would be Howard the Duck, which, which, the less said the better. One day we're gonna review that movie. Oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to think about duck titties. Ooh. Um, woo. <laughs> but basically, not only did Bogart want Dazzler, he wanted like the Avengers, Spider Man. Which, mind you, this is right around the time period that um. Spider-Man actually was on TV at this point. Um, he had been in The Electric Company, and he also... Um, oh, this is right around the, the time period where um, the Nicholas Hammond um, Sp- Amazing Spider-Man TV show oh, was airing. Well, by the 70s, Spider-Man was a household name. Like, Not to he, mention... Spider-Man! Hell is the emissary! Spider-Man! Anybody who has not seen uh, 70s Japanese Spider-Man, please check that out. That shit is amazing. And the, I, and I, this I wanna, co- I and, want a Blu-ray release of that shit. And please. this coming from a dude who who has no interest in Tokusatsu. Just throwing that out that, there. That shit is just fucking awesome. Uh, you know, like, one, of these, so, one of these days... It is so random and so weird to me that I love it. You know, one of these days you and I should just sit down and watch that, and then we should I have do, it like, on DVD. I have it. Remember, I have the whole show. I no, pirated yeah, it no, on you, the archive. You and I should just, like, chill one day, watch that, and then just, just talk I about it. I think you can actually get a, a fan uh, bootleg Blu-ray copy, oh, yeah. now, which I might actually end up getting, because I, I only have them on my computer, and I'm one of them guys that I like the physical copies. Yeah. Well, let, let me tell you, the, the only way you can get Spider-Man is the yeah, it's, the it's never been officially released. Well, it, it was released over in Japan, but th- there's no English subtitles for that. Yeah, you have, to get, you have to get fan fan dubs. And even yeah. then, um, as some reviewers have pointed out, the... The the subtitles are not always exactly yeah, grammatically ew. correct, especially for much older tokusatsu. It's just not. There's just not as much want. Interest. Well, yeah, interest in it and interest determines quality. In yeah, some and to be like fair, this. the Spider Man, you know, because it's Spider Man. Yeah, but uh, anyway, getting back to, but not only did they want to have all these Marvel characters, they wanted Robin Williams, like all these other people that worked for Casablanca, or, or was it Casablanca? Yeah, Casablanca Records. And, it makes sense they would want Robin Williams at this point because he would have been on Morgan oh, Mindy yeah. at this oh, point. No. So he, he would have been like well, no, he would have been really at the oh, beginning yeah, of his popularity. No. And not only him, they wanted Cher, Donna Summer, Rodney Dangerfield, Lenny and Squiggy. Which I I don't even know who the hell Lenny and Squiggy is. <laughs> I was about and to you say, know me. I, I I'm a history guy. I don't even know. I don't even know who Lenny and Squiggy are. And I know some like obscure shit. Like, but this this is like a partially why we wanted to do this episode is because. What we just read you, 
We're not making this shit up. You can yeah. Google this. This like, is real. It sounds like the most whacked out, amazing fanfic you will ever read. Well, and then as 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 it was getting into it, basically, you know, what happened is eventually, with all this stuff happening, basically, as the seventies were, you were strung out on coke, and you're all like, "We gotta get this made," and they they want they gave Marvel four days. And you know who decided, much like much like with Secret Wars, there can only be one man who for this job, me, Jim Shooter. Yo, can you imagine a disco remix of the Amazing Spider-Man song from the, the cartoon in the 60s? Oh, that would have been... <laughs> that would have been amazing. I don't know. I don't I would know. Da- I would dance to that. But basically, because this was only supposed to be like a half hour special for like TV. But by the time Jim Shooter got done writing this, this treatment... This was a feature fucking yeah, film. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, unfortunately, the guy who was working with Casablanca had health issues and Casablanca was getting basically ripped apart and sold to other companies. Well, that, um, a good part of that was, um, going back to Kiss, um, cause I don't think you, have I, have I, do you know a lot about Kiss at all? The band? Uh, I can't think so. Um, I okay, mean, I so, know a lot of stuff. So, but... uh, really the height of Kiss's popularity after, um, the release of their album Love Gun, mm-hmm. I believe it was. So, you know, at this point, they had, like, songs like Rock and Roll All Night, Love Gun, Detroit Rock City, Beth. You know, the, the big hits. Um, you know, and Gene Simmons' they, tongue hadn't gotten arthritis. They decided <laughs> that they were going to do... Because uh, another big thing, because I've read books about Kiss. Um, talk about the most volatile band of four guys who fucking hate each other. <laughs> like, you think the Beatles had oh, issues yeah. near the end. No, Kiss trumps it. But, um... So anyway, the main point I'm trying to get to here is um, Casablanca decided, along with Kiss, that they were going to do four solo albums. That, like, you know, they're still going to be a band, but they're going to do four yeah. solo albums. And they were going to release them all on the same day. You know, and they were going to have, like, almost identical covers, so you had to get all four. Yeah. It bombed bad. I mean, the albums themselves are not very good. Um, I think I think Ace Frehley's record's the best out of the bunch, but I like Gene Simmons as well. I have all yeah. four on vinyl. But, um... Casablanca took a bath on that. They lost a lot of money. Yeah. Like, um, I'm talking like these records were ended up in the bargain bins like less than a month after release. And now I know what you're thinking. At this point, why haven't we gotten to talk about the script yet? But it gets better. Like, th- like the story of how th- of this thing getting made is, or almost made, is actually probably yeah. just as good. Plus, at- to, to understand how batshit this whole saga is, you really, you, need, you, you really need us to give you the background yeah. if you don't know a lot about what was going on in the 70s. But basically... Until like this, this fell into into limbo until like the eighties, where um, the 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 lady the, the the VP of Marvel was at a film festival, and she ran into the only person who could be Dazzler, with her dazzle powers, the one, the only, Bo Derek. Yeah, this. And so basically, this shit you can't make up. And so basically. Bo, who, you know, basically was at that time, like, at the height of her popularity, um, was, uh, basically, like, like, heard that they were doing this, and Bo Derek was like, no, I want to do it. And I think also her husband had a little bit of, uh, of it in it. But basically, like, a big bidding war happened. And, unfortunately... Well, and you got to remember too that at this point, um, is, is this this movie had a better chance of being made because superhero films were starting to come kind of marketable because you know you had the the, Superman the Christopher movies, Reeves yeah. Superman movies, Batman was just on the horizon. Well, the, no, Batman was like like a decade, still a decade out. This, well, this, this is, is the, this well, is by the eighties. Well, yeah, but this is like eighty nine. Yeah, eighty nine was. That's still that's the end of the decade. That's what I mean by on the horizon. Well, no, yeah, I guess yeah. Um, you had you had the Batman serials from the forties. Yeah. Um and. And as we go, as I'm going through this article, basically at this point, to make matters worse, basically there were all these writers that were bidding for it. And unfortunately, Jim Shooter got kicked out of the way because this is before like comic book writers would be allowed anywhere near the the the, the set. Like the closest you got at, uh, would would get before like the af- before the '90s was Bob Kane like being on set to watch his creation get made. Like he wasn't allowed to like say, "Yeah, that that's how I that's my creation." I mean, aside from the fact that I stole from Bill Finger, but if I may, can we do, can we tweak one thing? There was no allowing for that. But basically, 
a bunch of things happened. For one, like, they wanted to get rid of Dazzler's light abilities, which, basically, for those of you who don't know Dazzler, which is probably all of you, <clears throat> basically, like, music gives her the ability to produce light powers. Later on, they just said she just has light powers, and she uses them for, spe for spectacle and her thing, but originally, she needed the power of disco and groove to charge up her light powers. For some reason. <laughs> Comic books. Hashtag. But basically, all of this happened. Bo was like, I want my husband to be the director. And apparently he was not a good director. Apparently, he, as this was saying, he was famous for basically so just it's, it's burning like, the budget to the ground. It's like Mila Jovovich and her husband, Paul Anderson. Oh, we'll get there. We'll get to Resident Evil one of these no, days. We're, I can't watch <clears> those movies again. But, but Colton, it's a weapon that's powerful against living things. Stop that. Get back. Get back. All right. Topic. Basically, uh, more or less, you know that the fact that in the '80s Marvel was not doing very well, um, because this was actually about the time the direct market was going to flop. <laughs> that basically got pumped up by like the late '80s Dark Age revival of stuff slash the '90s speculator boom. Because at the time, X-Men was only selling about 30,000 copies. If you know anything about in the 90s, X-Men was selling in, like, the millions in the in the 90s. Yeah, com compare that to now, when X-Men like, is, like, like, not even... I don't, think, I don't think X-Men is even in the top three. Yeah, but, like, basically... Um... They, they just... There was nothing gonna, was going to work, basically. Like, like they, they couldn't risk doing a movie with Dazzler. Um, and so eventually... You know, just, they just got forgotten. Yeah, and, and to make matters worse, Dazzler number one, when he tried to make Dazzler work so they could do records and stuff, it sold a whopping four thousand or four hundred and twenty eight thousand copies. Which again is not is, very isn't good. Shit. That isn't shit, basically. <laughs> like I I think I think Batman and Spider Man today do better than that, and they only usually do about six hundred to five hundred thousand copies. Um, on a good day, and when Tom King isn't writing one of them. He pissed on my Batman. Or Dan Slott, for that matter. Um, so yeah, like... Coming soon, the Dan Slott bash video, which I will then tag him on Twitter in. So, you know, you, you can already see why this movie didn't get made. Like, there was a, a big, it was big, ambitious production, but then everyone basically kind of had to pull their cards off the table, whether they wanted to or not. It's kind of like when you're drunk and you're like, man, this is a great idea. Well, I'm in on that idea. So am I. Then you, then you get sober and you're like, this is dumb. Yeah, basically. So, um, like, because, like, it, would have, it is kind of a shame because I think Bo Derek would actually have been an amazing Dazzler. Oh, yeah. I, I think this movie, do I think this movie would have been the greatest thing of all time? Hell no. Plus, but if you've this, seen Xanadu, her rolling skate, roller skate skills this, were amazing. It, it would have been interesting, if not just for the historical sake. Kind of like how the uh, the Roger Corman Fantastic Four movie is. Yeah. Um, which... <laughs> One day we'll talk about that. Oh, the, but uh, there's there's a great documentary about that out there, if you guys want to ever, like, learn more about that. Plus, the whole movie is on YouTube, actually, in its yeah. entirety, because it never got released. Yeah, because they only made it because I think basically Fox was like, we need, to, we need to keep the rights, make this movie, but don't release it. Which I'm like, I don't understand how that works, but... I think there's some legality. I think they actually had, there was a lawsuit over that. So, you know, like... and As we go into this, because there, there is a cast list here, you're going to see why we, we say this movie would have been batshit. I'm talking like Pete's Dragon batshit. You thought Howard the Duck was whack. Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. You you thought it was whack? Nah. This it is only... quack. <laughs> this is quack. You stole my joke. You asshole. Duck. This is what I have to work with, people. I'll have you know I'm a master of quack food. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody messes with a master of quack food. <laughs> we need to we need to we need to review that movie at some point. The movie is so whack that I mean, it's, it's funny. People as hell. complain about that movie, but I'm like, the movie's it, funny. Well, not only that, it's really in line with how weird Howard the Duck is. But anyway, oh, the duck. So, so at a. Uh, at 24 minutes in, we finally get to the actual. Let's, let's get to the script. actual, yeah. Which, as it's called, was going to be called New York, New York, or A Tale of Two Cities. <laughs> Jim Shooter, Jesus Christ. Okay, so let's talk about the cast. Charles real quick. Dickens would like to have a word. So, first off, we don't even have like Dazzler at the top. 
she's at the bottom because there's certain characters that are literally it's just as themselves. Spider Man as himself. The Avengers as themselves. Dazzler herself. They didn't need because to be fair, I'm pretty sure this treatment was written before they had Bo Derek in mind. Yeah. But like this was supposed to be Dazzler's movie, and she literally is as herself. It's like if we made a. Uh, it's like if we made a Spider Man movie, but you know he's just. Uh, he's an Iron Boy Junior. Yeah. So first off, the first character, one of the villains of the Witch Queen, played by Cher. Gypsies, tramps, and thieves. Hey, you believe in love and love. Oh my god. Somebody, somebody needs to do a fan made treatment of this movie. Like, just make this as a fan film because this could be made. Donna Summer as the Queen of Fire. Kiss as the Dread Knights. Oh my god. The Dread Knights. And it still would have been a better movie than Kiss meets the Phantom of the Park. Yeah, anything's better than Kiss and oh the, op- and the Phantom that of the movie, Park. You don't know how bad that movie is until you watch it. Yeah, which, which I'm like, as someone who's seen some of some of uh, the Beatles' films, or even, even if in pieces, the Beatles' those, films are even better than this. Like, I love the Beatles to death. These anything by the Beatles is infinitely better. Um, Robin Williams as Tristan, <laughs> you know that breakout Marvel character Tristan. My voice gives me super strength. <laughs> I don't know if you get that joke or not. No, I, I do. That's a oh, okay. Okay, I didn't know if you how much you knew of Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge, and then. The one that makes me laugh so hard, Rodney Dangerfield as Dewey, Cheatham, and Hal, and and as Lord Chaos. And my personal favorite, the village people as the Stompers and Le- Lenny and Squeaky as the Jesters. Bet you never thought that a Marvel movie with the fucking village people. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like we made a, if we made a if we made a Marvel movie now with um I'm trying to think of some really ridiculous casting choice. I mean oh, like I, it, I got it. The Hulk s- played by Papa John. <laughs> Day of Reckoning. <laughs> Hulk smash inferior pizza. I've had 40 pizzas. I've had 40 pizzas. You wouldn't like me when I've had 40 pizzas. So like, but like uh, but like, I love I love the Papa John memes. Like right already, now. like clearly, like this is already bad shit. Because like Casablanca's character, like actors, are characters no one's known of, and you have Rodney Dangerfield as the main bad guy. Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, I can't believe it! I lost to a rug. <laughs> Which it was Robin Williams doing Rodney Dangerfield? <laughs> I mean, it's a double whammy. It's the goof of all time. Uh, just. So like okay, so, Bas- get into the story. so basically the story begins with like Dazzler, you know, putting on a show, you know, and and it points out like that like everyone thinks that like her lights abilities are you know special effects, you know, stage ma- stage trickery, and while well, all this is like and basically you know she's having a good time and then suddenly she vanishes, which reading this I'm like. Oh, so this is where Shooter came up with Secret Wars. I was petrified. <laughs> but while this is all going on, at stately Avengers Mansion, literally we're just thrown into Avengers Mansion. Meanwhile, <laughs> at stately Wayne Manor. Like, <laughs> like, no one in the 70s knew yeah. what the Avengers Mansion was. Like, who, who's gonna know Holy that? Holy dad, Zook's Iron Man. <laughs> but uh, and I love it, because basically, Iron Man... The Falcon, Scarlet Witch, Beast, Beast. Be- He's an Avenger <laughs> in the Crossing. Let it go. I, I know. I'm, I'm gonna let that one slide. <laughs> but like, but like you, like you, like already we're like we're getting into like the later Avengers cast. Like, there's no Cap. There's no Thor. Wasp. Is that, well, is yeah, it, we have Wasp, but she Wasp and she was yeah, and she's she is one of the founding members of the Avengers. But basic. And I, I love the description for her. Janet Van Dyne was given a serum by her scientist husband that enables her to shrink to insect size and sprout wings. She is an heiress and very much a lovable scatterbrain. That's Janet for you. Well, I mean, it is Janet for you, but I'm like, it explains that her husband gave her her abilities, but But Hank's not in this. Yeah, but Hank's not anywhere. (laughs) How can you do that? (laughs) Because, let's be honest, do you really think they were going to be able to pull off doing Hank in this at all? I I know. You think Giant Man was going to show up? No, I, I know, I know. Um... And you're like, basically, they're chilling. You know, Jarvis is serving them food. Again, they just throw Jarvis in here. Like, they're throwing all these characters in, and no one's going to know who even, any of them are. I don't even know who you are. 
Like, if, if I were watching this movie, if, if it were made in the 70s, I, A, I'm already tripped out on weed or some other or some other hallucinogen. And I'm sitting in this movie theater. All of a sudden, all these colorful characters come on screen. I'm like, I'm going to be like, oh, God, I'm having a bad trip. Who are all these people? When do we get more Dazzler? Um, and then like that, that, this really does read like, like a bad fan fic because... You know, they're just chilling at Avengers Mansion having a meeting, which means they're all sitting around playing poker, I guess, like in the Spider-Man movie or Spider-Man somewhere, video game. Somewhere Black Widow is playing the piano. <laughs> and showing off her ass because that's her dun, best feature. Dun, 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 dun. Um, Peter Parker just shows up. Oh, and Mary Jane's in it. <laughs> and Mary, Mary Jane! Jane's in it for Mary two Jane, seconds. Yeah. I'm like, for why, two why seconds. even have her? Like, I love Mary Jane, but... What, don't, why, don't question it. I'll take, any, is, I'll take any Mary Jane appearance I can get. But basically, they're 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 like they're like they're on their way there because they're on a subway in the theater district because you know Mary Jane did theater. Um, and basically, a big light cat kidnaps Peter and the Avengers, and even Jarvis drops his tea tray and says, "Oh my, that's the only line I've gotten so far from Jarvis." By the way, that's the only one in the whole script. Yeah, I know it's it's a treatment. Um. Imagine this thing is a two-hour film. Um, Jesus Christ, this the, would be such a nightmare. For those of you who don't know what I mean when I say treatment, a treatment is basically normally supposed to be only like a three pages. This is this is fourteen. Okay. But a treatment is basically like this is what I want to do for this movie. Here are some highlights to try and you know, because basically it's like let me, a, it, let me get my rough ideas out. Yeah, and not paper. only that, it's kind of like an elevator pitch. Like if you can't get anyone invested in like three pages. But like as you will see with this, and when later when we do the Cameron one, sometimes people just like write like a novella in their treatment. <laughs> like, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. And as you can see already, this is this, like, 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 like just right here. Let me just read a paragraph of this. P finds himself tumbling through subspace, falling down a seemingly endless tunnel-like vortex. He doesn't know what's going on or where he's going. But he figures he'd better he's better off facing this as Spider-Man. He doffs off he doffs off his outer clothes, pulls on his mask, and kathump, suddenly lands back in reality. He appears to be in Manhattan, yet something isn't right about it. Before he has time to ponder, though, the sounds of battle catch his attention. Not far away, he sees the the Avengers and Disco Dazzler, which like this whole thing they call her Disco Dazzler, because they really want to just call oh, her no. Disco Dazzler. I'm on Earth X. <laughs> uh, and basically, uh, to make a long story short. Basically, the Avengers and Dazzler and Spider-Man get... And I'm not calling her Disco Dazzler this whole time. I'm just calling her Dazzler because it's too long of a... Or basically, they end up fighting a bunch of lizard men. How they would do the lizard men, I don't know. Because this was the 70s. Well, here's what happened. Bas basically, this is an alternate reality where the lizard from Amazing Spider-Man 1's plan actually worked. <laughs> he turned half more, of New York into lizard people. It all makes sense. And... Uh, and all while this off, we, we're introduced to yet another character. Like, let's count how many characters we have so far. We have all the Avengers, which is like seven people. Spidey. And Dazzler. So we have like ten people already. Cut to, Ro to, to Rodney Dangerfield number one, looking rather uncomfortable in his typical Rodney Dangerfield way. Yeah, direct uh, quote. Direct, direct quote. quote. <laughs> like, you know, ho, oh, oh. ho. Oh, hey everybody! Guess what? We're all gonna get laid. <laughs> like, can you imagine Rodney Dangerfield being a villain? Like, I'll ship Dazzler and Rodney Dangerfield together. Somebody get me this fanfic. Oh, Dazzler! I hope you and I are gonna light up the town. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh fucking god! I can't believe it. Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know why wait, I sound wait, like. Wait, 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 I sound like Oh, like a wrong I don't know, I have a hole, a hole. I, <laughs> I, I wish Elvis would have showed up in this too, because it would have just <laughs> it would have been fucking perfect. <laughs> I, think, been. I think he was dead at this point. No, so I it know, wouldn't have mattered. Unless you want a weekend at Bernie's. Oh thing, God! <laughs> Stop with weekend at Bernie's. God. Let's be honest. Hold on, sidetrack for a minute. Can you tell me with a straight face? That they would be able to make we get at fucking Bernie's with a modern day audience. No, of course they Nobody wouldn't. Nobody in hell would not be offended by it. They couldn't even make we get at Bernie's two, where he's brought back to life by voodoo magic. Isn't that the one where he gets laid? No, the first one is where he gets laid. It's so fucking bad. While he's dead. Oh god. All right. <laughs>
So we, we should do an episode on just weekend. No, we're not at talking Bernie's. about weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> Stop trying to make weekend at Bernie's happen. It's not going to happen. God. It needs to. What damn it. Is, we're talking it's, about Dazzler. <laughs> weekend at Dazzler's. There you go. No, I got it. I got it. It's when X, Professor X is dead and they're just instead of Bernie, it's Professor X. <laughs> And it's Magneto doing all the stunt work. And oh, shit. God. <laughs> oh, thank God this isn't done by Warner Brothers, or they would have done the the dancing frog thing with with his body. Oh. <laughs> Stop trying to make we get a Bernie's happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It will. We will have We're a not going to make it happen. I will have, I will have my, my weekend at Bernie's, and I will have it on the piano. No, you're not. <laughs> we'll talk about it when we do... Things that don't need to, didn't need to be franchises because there, I there, there is two of those. I don't know why. <laughs> but funny anyway, funny. now that we've gone on such a tangent about fucking weekend at Bernie's. Okay, so Chetham basically thinks. So basically, uh, uh, a bunch of soldiers are and basically the the um the heroes gather around and ask this this Ronnie Dangerfield what's what's going on. Chetham like basically tells him you know thanks. And assures them that they're in no danger of being sued. <laughs> what? That's I, okay. Um, that's the thing, I guess. Moving on. And basically, Spider-Man asks where we are, and he and basically they're told it's Manhattan. Kind of, it's uh, Manhattan in the future, I think. And in the distant future of two thousand and one. Basically, the these characters were brought here. Um. Because basically, there it's after a time where an apocalypse happened called the Great Disaster, which not not the same Great Disaster as the one that was referenced in Countdown: The Final Crisis, which led into Final Crisis and Commandy at Earth's End. This one basically wiped out all of civilization's history and such, um, and basically, Manhattan is now like a police state with two. Um, oh yeah, he. And for some reason, Jim Shooter decides to explain that uh, Ronnie Dangerfield thinks the um, the apocalypse had something to do with a cas- with casino gambling and frozen yogurt. Like this is the kind of humor you wanted to give Ronnie Dangerfield. This is terrible. <laughs> like, like I, he couldn't have made this work. No one could have made this work. You can write this stuff, George, but you sure as hell can't say it. Um, but basically. Now there's two feudal states, Upper Hatton and Lower Hatton, which I don't... Has Manhattan ever been called that? I'm, I'm, I'm not a New Yorker, I don't know. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, Basically, there's two queens, the Queen of Fire and the Witch Queen, and they're at war. And and that, and that now, like, uh, three pages in, Dazzler is once again mentioned. Because basically she asks, because, she, like, she's the important one of this group. Just spoiler alerts. But basically, they're they're mad because both sides wants this guy called Tristan. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think they they get into it. And it's also, this is where Tristan Tristan pops in, who is played by Robin Williams. Uh, yeah. And basically, uh, they're fighting because basically, a, a mysterious entity known as the Lord of Chaos, a mysterious Oz like being with great power. Uh, brought them here because they are going to fulfill a prophecy. That basically, um, someday a sun queen will come with her invincible knights to unite the two queens of Manhattan. So, obviously, Dazzler's probably that queen. Because, I mean... Why not? Why Plot not? device. Plot device. Which, great way to sell a new character is to just make her important to the plot without actually making her import, like actually important to the plot. Like, the main character. Because so far, Spider-Man and the Avengers have been more main characters in this treatment than Dazzler herself. Which is just... Like... This is not good writing. And basically, Tristan falls in love with Dazzler. Because apparently, like, as this treatment goes on, he wanted to bang, like, all three queens, including Dazzler. Yeah, it actually leads... Later on, I'll, I'll have a comment about how what this eventually leads to without giving it away before we get there. Um... And basically, like, and Dazzler also swoons at him for some reason. I, I don't know why. I mean, the script writers help, helped him out. You know, he probably looked at her and went, Nanu, Nanu. Oh. <clears throat> or, you know, he probably sang, uh, 
a friend like me, you know, whatever, you know, Robin gave, Williams is gave, good gave, gave her the best Good Morning Vietnam impression. Oh, man. It's 0900. What does the O stand for? Oh, my God. It's early. <laughs> <laughs> um, but basically, uh, the, basically, the, the heroes get attacked from, by, both, by both armies. Uh, from the north come fiery garbed, unicorn mounted warriors and spearmen and champion in char- chariots made from old VWs. So basically, this is some Mad Max shit right here. <laughs> this is some really Mad Max shit. And then from the south come uh, Mad Max the- have been made at this point, right? Too have yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. The first one, the Road, yeah, War- the, 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 Road, the, Road, the, the Road Warrior wasn't the first one. Road Warrior is the uh, second yeah, I think one. it was just called Mad Max. The first yeah, one, just Mad Max. And then from the south comes dark lizard mounted warriors who were after Tristan before, but this time with reinforcements. And they have lizard-drawn battle wagons made from old Datsun pickup trucks. Datsun. Oh, is it pronounced Datsun? Datsun. Sorry, I don't know. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a very famous car brand. Okay. Um, and I think that side is... So basically, the village people's side gets unicorns. And Kiss's side, who are basically demons, get lizard monsters. Already, I'm like, this is just going to be horses with, with glued-on horns and lizard and horses with this like is, with like lizard rec- face this masks. This is some requiem for a dream shit. Yeah, and basically, so basically, you know, the Avengers, Spidey and Daz are, are like, well, I guess we're just gonna have to fight it out. Like as you do. Like, like this 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 film is at almost no plot. It's just our heroes being kidnapped, fighting, and getting kidnapped again because they get kidnapped in this at this point. Basically, um, both sides kidnap half the heroes. Um, Iron Man, Spider-Man, and Scarlet Witch are in the throne room of the Witch Queen, and the rest of them, I think, are in the fl- the Queen of Fire. Um, the Witch Queen cre- Queen has her um, throne room. I, I want to say it was some somewhere really crazy, because basically, it was like, in like it was like in like the one remaining World Trade Center, which is oh, yeah. oh oddly yeah. oddly foreboding, oddly prophetic. <laughs> yeah, which is. Which in hindsight, like oh, that's which in kinda, hindsight kinda is kinda creepy. Uh, but you know, like it was the it, like it, it, I don't think Jim Shooter was a prophet for anyone wondering. I, you know, they want the, like the Trade Center, you know, was a uh, like an iconic. It was just the thing they did. Um, there's yeah. obviously no intent and hidden minute, hidden message. I want to say in the Mario Brothers movie, King Koopa's fortress is in the World Trade Center it's, or, or it, a, 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 it an area a big, like the It was World a very Trade big Center. important landmark for New York at that point. Um, and basically. Um, they're taken to her court where they meet Dewey, who is Rodney Dangerfield number two. We're up to two Rodney Dangerfields. The Dangerfield levels are getting insanely high. It's over 9,000. Over nine? Well, no, we're not getting there yet. We need all four of them before it gets to over 9,000. Um, so basically, he is basically just Cheatham, except he wears a different colored suit and tie and glasses. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I figured no one would hit a guy in glasses, but, uh, you know, everybody would probably want to take a hit of me. Oh, but it looks great on you. Um, and basically, he works for the Witch Queen, and his, her jester Lenny. So it's Lenny, not is, funny. Yeah, who's which? I I don't know Lenny and Squeaky, so I'm assuming they're they're actually I, I comedians don't know. or like I, they're actually funny. I'm gonna assume that I don't know. Not at all. Part, though of, he tries and tries. part of me doesn't want to. Yeah, same. Um, basically, which she has the Dread Knight. So basically. She's like you know all demon, demony and spooky, and so you know she has Kiss as her as her ensemble, ensemble as you will, as it will. Um, basically, that you know, uh, yeah. So this is where they find out they're in the tr- they're in the trade center or well the remains of the trade center. There's no way of me saying that that doesn't sound it's, awkward. It's, I know, <laughs> but um, basically everything has gone back to like medieval technology basically is what is what they find there's no electricity no cars except those drawn by lizards horses kind of reminds me of the uh apocalyptic future we see in back to the future 2 also kind of reminds me of um the of uh escape from manhattan yeah really they're probably they were probably drawn on both uh, those. particularly because like there's like a wall that like divides Wall Street to protect the like the like the witch queens in her stronghold, which totally sounds like something from Escape New York. I'm waiting for Snake Plissken to just randomly appear in the script. Um, and so basically they're be they're going to be held captive, and so Scarlet Witch tries to fight her. Um, and she tries to use her he- like, they even say God, her God, hex God powers. Bless Wanda. <laughs> and then Iron Man tries as well, but unfortunately like like the magic chains uh uh. 
can't help them, which, and then it also says, while Spider-Man, who isn't quite as strong, struggles, grunts, and groans, and finally breaks free. Which I'm like, that, this, sto this story doesn't do Spidey any, any favors. Well, I mean, if you're, I, I kind of like the fact that he's the only one that can actually break free of the restraints, compared to the more powerful Scarlet Witch and Iron Man, showing that, like, no matter what, Spidey don't give up. Yeah. But, like, this is what, this is, like, one of the things that, if you, if you, if you're a Marvel fan, this is, Spider-Man is put into things because he makes money, but doesn't have a lot to do. Um, you might hold on the phone for a second. I want to take a sip. Yeah. If you want, you can you can start telling the script yeah. a little bit. Well, that's it, guys. Tune in next week. <laughs> same time, same um, hyphen channel. But yeah, basically, as you'll see, this is basically just us introduced to the Witch Queen, and the heroes try to fight back, and the Witch Queen, of course, doesn't, like, fail. Yeah. Like, they fail. Yeah, so they fail, basically. And then we get introduced to the... Sorry, I'm just trying to find the... The Queen of Fire. By the way, there's there's a lot of typos in here. Like one of these literally <laughs> says the Witch Queen. Which <laughs> the is, Witch Queen. Which is so funny to me. Well, I, I mean, why. to be fair, Jim Shooter was writing this on a typewriter. Yeah. Which they're a lot harder um, to type with as someone who actually did use a typewriter once. So we're we're introduced to the Dread Knights. Otherwise known as KISS. <laughs> we have Gene Simmons, the demon, who has super strength and the ability to breathe fire. So basically Gene Simmons. Yeah. Uh, Paul Stanley, the star child, the star child. fires rays yeah. from his starred eyes. Ace Freely, the space ace, can teleport short distances and pass phantom like th th fa pass phantom like through solid objects. Not to be confused with the arcade game space ace. Just and that, and he's that basically out. got Katie Pride's powers. Oh, he's in. He uh, can make himself intangible. He can go through solid objects. Yeah, he's basically he's basically yeah, Katie. Yeah, intangible. Peter Chris, the cat, has cat like agility and speed, and also is the one nobody likes. <laughs> Which I feel ashamed because, like, you know, like you're you're one of the members of Kiss and nobody likes you. It's, like, no, like if, if he you're, sings their biggest hit, Beth. Yeah, well, yeah, like, 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 like if if people dress up as Kiss, like, at, like to go to it's always Paul Stanley or, or Gene Simmons. Like, no one, yeah, yeah, no one, like, well, like if you want to do like everybody be a member of Kiss, no one's gonna be like, I want to play the cat. It's, I want, I don't want to, I don't want to be anybody else. No, nobody cat. wants to be. Uh, oh, what's that other guy in Kiss? The, the the Anka warrior basically like he was oh, like, yeah, I forgot there was like a fifth guy yeah no nobody wants to be him basically oh just that the, guy that guy is kind of a uh, kind of an asshole so but um <laughs> basically you know the the Avengers are, <clears throat> are forced back by Kiss basically and that's that's like that's the end of that one of my things that already is annoying is that basically all of the, the villains because they're played by actual actors. Get to do really cool stuff like Witch Queen is Cher, right? Yeah. Like she gets to be like imposing and evil, kind of like Maleficent. Yeah, like a, like a, a Maleficent character. Um, and like Kiss get to actually beat up Spider Man and <laughs> and Iron Man and uh, Scarlet Witch. I would actually be curious to see what Iron Man they would have done because. For those of you who don't know, Iron Man didn't always look like he did. It would have been that silver one, like, you oh, know no, what uh, I'm talking about. No, the, the Silver Century did not come until, like, mid-late 80s. This, it probably would have been... Oh, I'm talking the original one. Oh, no, um, at this point, it would have, it would have been his red and gold. At this point, okay. he it, uh, he's in this... But, like, um, there's two. There's actually two versions of that Iron Man armor helmet. Because originally, it actually had, like, it had like like a prong where, like, it was red, but, like, it had, like, two gold parts here. Mm -hmm. Because originally, that um, it was supposed to be fold away. Like, basically, he could lift it up. There's a second one where it's just a, a helmet that he pops off and on and off, uh, which is actually where he got his moniker of Old Shellhead because it kind of looked like a he kind of looked like a bullet, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. He never really looked. Like so while that's going on, you know, we're over with the other members the, of the, the Queen of captured Avengers, we are now with the Queen of Fire and her court, which includes her royal guard, the Stompers, her totally unfunny jester Squiggy, and her counselor House. Who, the, uh, D Rodney Danger number, th Danger Field number three. For those of you keeping track at home, these levels are getting way too high. Yeah, the, uh, and uncomfortably high. Uh, who looks a good, uh, who looks a good bit like Dewey and Cheatham. Um, so basically, um, <clears throat> same thing kind of happens. They they try to fight the Queen of Fire, and uh, for those who don't know, the Stompers are the Village People. <laughs> Not a seventies movie without the Village People. In the Navy. So we have uh, the motorcycle cop. Has a nightstick that's charged with cack crackling energy. <laughs> He's basically Prometheus from Batman. <laughs> the construction worker has a jackhammer that can create a small earthquake. The cowboy twirls an unbreakable lasso that he controls as if it were alive. So he's basically Wonder Woman. He's basically Wonder Woman. So Kiss gets to have all the cool powers. And these guys get to reject. <laughs> like, 
Uh, which is kind of funny because they kind of sound like the Wreckers, um, a traditional Avengers villain who basically they all are themed around construction equipment. Yeah. Oh, but we're not done yet. The Indian has a tomahawk that cuts through anything. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Casual. We, casual, casual 70s racism. racism. Oh, no. <laughs> one, day, one day when we can do editing, oh, no. I'm going to get like the, the tackiest MS Paint <laughs> font, and I'm just going to have that along the bottom. It just says casual, casual decade racism. racism. Oh, God. For those of you who don't know, that's a... Re- um, that's a recurring gag, gag between us. Um, casual we, we watched an episode of the of the '60s Spider-Man show. Oh, and they, they had, had the dude from Wakanda. And it looks. I'm and talking he, like the the he, bone, bone in the, the nose. nose. It looks so horrible. He talks and clicks and whistles. Yeah, it's like oh, this oh. Th- this did not. Oh, and to make matters worse, well at all. he works for a white dude. He works for the white jungle hunter, and I'm like, which is just oh, all kinds God. of racist. <laughs> all kinds of racist. <laughs> um, and so basically, you have the same fight except. All the lame Avengers are doing this fight. Yeah, you have, um, basically, you have Falcon, Beast, and the Wasp. Yeah. who And who of those, like, the, the one most likely to escape is the Wasp, just because of her shrinking powers. But we still have two more village people to go over. Oh, God. The GI has a sidearm that fires mystic, fiery, laser-like blasts. So, basically, he's an episode of G.I. Joe. The Leather Man is super strong. He wields an unbreakable chain. Unbreakable chain? Oh yeah, we're uh, we will never break the chain. <laughs> and then we have the bang, most powerful, bang, bang, bang. the most powerful uh, uh, evil Jefferson Starship. Sh- Star- <laughs> we will not break the sky. sky on fire. <laughs> AKA the only good thing from the Star Wars holiday special, which they actually released. That's on their box set. That song is no on their shit. box set. They released it. It's on their box. To be set. fair, that is a good song. It is uh, a good song. It's the best part of the whole thing. It really is. So basically, there's that fight, you know, and then basically. Um, we cut to another scene uh, at the ruins of the tavern on the green in the demilitarized zone. Uh, for those of you who don't know what the tavern on the green is, I think it's like a park. To to, qu- to quote one of my favorite Robin Williams lines, because we're talking about a ro- show with Robin because this is a scene with Robin Williams. Because I know you've seen Good Morning Vietnam. Mm-hmm. What is the demilitarized zone anyway? It sounds like something out of The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> oh, don't go in there. You're among the little people now. We represent the army. <laughs> oh no! Follow the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Follow the Ho Chi Minh Trail. <laughs> oh, oh, that movie. That movie is great. What's that? Is the guy that, that that's actually based? I was like, no, nah, that that wasn't how I was. Yeah, I'm it, like, but you know, like it's, it, it's a it's, a it's movie. Robin they, Williams it, being Robin Williams. It's certainly better than Patch Adams, which oof. Don't watch Patch Adams. That's not a recommendation of mine. <laughs> so basically, we cut to a scene with um, Dazzler and Tristan, basically, and um, oh, and just a re- uh, the, the Fire Queen is apparently holed up in like the muse- like the New York Museum of Art. I think is where they say it was, uh, like the Noma. Yeah, something like that, basically. And basically, what this scene does is that you know they it sets up this this weird love plot with Tristan and Dazzler, and he basically explains like you're the sun you're the Sun Queen. You know, yeah. you're the one the prophecy is told about. It has to be you. I know it's you. I saw it happen. I Don't watched it happen. happen. Don't tell me it didn't. He's apparently a Romulan. <laughs> but so that basically goes to that. You oh, know, could you imagine and, Robin Williams is in Star Trek? Yeah, so basically oh. then, you know, we have, you know, Tristan basically is what he's trying to do. He's trying to seduce Dazzler, Dazzler. Th- throughout this. And because basi- as we learn later, basically he seduced every single queen because apparently Robin Williams is the actual bad guy of this piece. Yeah, but so basically Cheatham enters and he basically is like, oh no, both queens have decided they're going to kill their captives. You know, because Dazzler's whole thing is like, I, I, I want to stay here and know you, Tristan, but I got to go rescue my, my friend. Friends. I got stuff to do. Because, yeah. you know, da- especially because Dazzler hasn't done anything. This would have been like 20 to 30 minutes of this film where we just see the Avengers try and fail to fight the evil queens. And then we cut back to Dazzler. It's like a bad fan film. This is like a bad comic book plot. It's- but so basically, you know... You know, cheat them, cheat them is like, but fear not, for you are the sun queen of the prophecy, and it must be fulfilled. So basically, you know, we cut back to the witch queen, you know, Spider Man, Scarlet Witch, and Iron Man, you know, they're, they manage to get out because the key is conveniently hanging on the other side of the room. You know, and Spidey, using his, his web shooters, shooters, manages to grab it and pull it in. Which is the only useful thing Spider, like, especially because Iron Man says in here, he does it with difficulty. I'm like, but Peter Parker, I know that would be easy shit to do. Come on now. Also, not to be He's that been guy. At this for two decades like, at this point. Well, I appreciate them giving Spider-Man something to do. Iron Man and Scarlet Witch could have also easily done that. Scarlet Witch could have used her powers. Yeah. That's... And Iron Man could have used like a magnet or something. And I'm sorry, my phone keeps flicking nah, it's off. It's all good. 
Could have used his, like, he could have, like, magnetized the armor. He, like, I, I appreciate them trying to give Spidey stuff to do. But that was, like, the most obvious thing for him to do. And probably, they probably would have used Nicholas Hammond's Spider-Man in this. Yeah, I really, that would actually would have been really cool. I actually like Nicholas It would have been really cool, but. Um, but so basically, <clears throat> you know, they, they get out of the cell, but then Cheatham's there and he guides them and takes them back to the tavern. So basically, that queen, at the Queen of Fire's dungeon, the same thing's happening, basically, yeah. to the other Avengers. You know, Falcon, Beast, <clears throat> and Wasp get out, you know. But basically what's happening as well is that Dewey is, is they're basically blaming the escape of the Avengers on the other queen in, in question, yeah. basically. So the Queen of Fire, the Queen of Fire, it's being blamed on the Queen, the, the Witch, Witch Queen, queen and, vice, and versa. vice versa. So basically that's what's going on. So it's going to lead to this, basically this big final battle. Basically. And while this is going on, a mysterious figure is watching from above our fourth Rodney Dangerfield. It's, da it's Dan Slott. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. No, it's the most powerful Robert Rodney Dangerfield at all. The fate, the 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 Wizard of Oz, Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, I can't believe it. So basically, it leads into the you know the 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 both queens and their 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 village people and Kiss armies are going to lead. And they're going to there's going to be this big final battle. <laughs> Which can we, can we just take a dear moment? Dear God, to... this would have been funny <laughs> as hell. This would have been the most amazing, stupid thing you and I would have ever seen. This would have been amazing. Like, you again, have... can somebody please? Make a fan film. Somebody get a Kickstarter started for All this. I can think of is just seeing... It would have been like the, the battle on the boo with the Gungans and oh the, dr and the battle droids. Detroit Rock City is playing over it, too. Dun -dun 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 oh, my God. Dun -dun 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 -dun. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been amazing. Oh, my God. This, this no, like, it's like going back and forth, because then over on the village people's side... Why? <laughs> MCA. And that's Kiss... Go, that's going on. And Kiss, Kiss is Detroit Rock uh, City. Ah... This would have been fucking beautiful. Oh, my God. But so anyway, this leads into, you know, they're getting ready. And so the Avengers get back up, you know, and mm. they're all convinced, you know, that Dazzler is is this fabled Sun Queen, the one that will bring balance to the queens, basically, to paraphrase Star Wars. We interviewed the kid. Don't stop with that. I don't want to get sued. <laughs> oh, Weird Owl knows I love him. But so basically, you Everybody know. Everybody loves him. You know, so basically, and let's mention that Trish, Tristan... He really does love Dazzler. He really does. Really underlined. Yeah. Just so you know. Just so you know that Robin Williams really wants to bang Bo Derek. Basically. Oh, crap. Lost my place. Sorry. No worries. Nah, I got it. I got it. Okay. Like, so basically, you know, then we cut to we cut to the, the battleground, basically, you know, and the, and, and, and kiss the just, three forces all <laughs> face each other. The Witch Queen and Queen of Fire exchange comments, which show how they've been misled by Dewey and Howe. But before anyone can catch on, Dewey, Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe all yell charge, and the battle the battle starts. Chaos ensues. Yeah, because if you hadn't figured it out by now, all three Rodney Dangerfields are separate parts of this thing called the Lord of Chaos, which... I don't even know if that's a real Marvel thing. I've never it, heard. I Lord don't think of it is. Before. It's probably some um, some shit made up for this. Well, I, and to be fair, I, like it probably has something to do with Doctor Strange, and I I don't know Doctor Strange very well. Yeah. So basically, you know that. Oh, well, well, uh, we should probably at least explain the Lord of Chaos's whole plan here. Yeah, go ahead and explain it. Um, basically, he wants to like basically cause war because he is powered by chaos. That kind of the great disaster more than likely is his fault. That basically, when the heroes disappeared. He used his powers to create a great war because the more there is war and hate and bloody bloody blah, wah, violence, he go he gets more powerful and basically wants to cause like Armageddon so that he can become all powerful or some bullshit like that. Yeah. <laughs> because it's the seventies and we have to do an anti war message. Not Ooh. that I'm I'm pro war. Just war. Who? Yeah. yeah, want it? But like, there's a way of doing an anti-war message, and there's where a, it's not overbearing. Like, take for example, Pokemon the first movie trying to be like, "Good morning, uh, Vietnam." Good, does good it, morning does well it, as well. Mash does very well with it, about how war is war is hell. What's so civil about war? Fa Father, who who goes to hell? Yeah, but so the basically. So then the Avengers jump in, led by Dazzler, and they cut their way through both armies. I'm like, and of course oh, it's. It's the heroine powered by music and peace and all that other stuff that's leading the charge. Because, you know, music and hippie culture. Yeah. So basically all the queens face, face, and face. Face to face to face. 
So basically, you know, they they ignore their the Queen of Fire and Queen Witch Queen ignore their hatred of each other to deal with the new usurper, and basically. The Queen of Fire asks why Dazzler has come to, do, to be in this, and Dazzler begins to explain, I'm the Sun Queen, and well, it is written, but finally, she's just doing this to settle their war and for and for Tristan. And then... Tristan! The other two queens <laughs> scream in unison. Both, of course, were also courted by Tristan, and both, thanks to their co their consulars, think the others stole Tristan from them, and that's a large part of the and, basis and, of their mutual and dislike. To, to give you all a mental image... This is literally, literally a cat fight. Yeah, between Bo Derek, Donna... Williams. Between Bo Derek... Donna Summers and Cher over Robin Williams. I mean, granted, Cher's probably doing a lot better than Sonny Bono. We, we've had all <laughs> kinds of tropes in this thing. And this, this is the icing on the cake. Like, who do you think would win in that fight between Cher, Bo Derek, and Donna Oh, uh, Christ. I don't even uh, want to think about Donna this. Summers. I don't even I feel like Cher, just because I feel like Cher would be the most, mo most willing I to I could make a, a really, really fucked up joke right now, but I'm not going to. No, let's, let's, we, we've done I'll enough. Tell you, I'll tell you after the show's done. Oh, what? Hey, remember that time the guys brought up Weekend at Bernie's? And Stop. One... <laughs> That movie's funny. I don't care what he says. <laughs> that movie is funny as hell. It's funny as hell, but not when we bring up people that have are recently deceased. It's been a decade. It's fine. Anyway. Anyway, getting back to it. So basically, you know, they all they all fight. Um, direct quote from this treatment. The fact that Dazzler 2 is apparently involved with Tristan is the final straw. <laughs> That's the final straw? Not the fact that you've all... Like, like, honestly, I don't know why they're mad at Dazzler. <laughs> The poor woman just showed up, and all of a sudden, Robin Williams is like, oh, 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 I totally am down for you, Desert Hole. Yeah, so basically, you know, they fight, and then basically Tristan tries to, you know, go after one of the Roddy Dangerfields and gets slapped aside, basically like a piece of paper. Yeah, because at this point, like, they, they, they're they at their highest. Like, the, the, the Roddy Dangerfields are at It's over 9,000. Power. Unlimited Power. Oh, yeah, uh, I am Lord Chaos. <laughs> but so anyway, you know, uh, Dazzler manages to calm both queens down, convincing them that she's not out for their blood or their realms. Um, it eventually, you know, it leads to the battle stopping, and all three Rodney Dangerfields are now suddenly drained of their power. And the Lord of Chaos is like, no, I've been foiled by the power so of now, love. So now all three Rodney <clears throat> Dangerfields are basically... Uh, are basically faced off by Ed. And this is this is the full lineup now. Fa Ed in this corner, we have we have Ronnie. Dazzler, Spider Man, the Avengers, the Witch Queen, the Queen of Fire, the Stompers, the Dreadnought, Dread Knights, Lenny and Squiggy versus three Rodney Dangerfields and Robin Williams. Is that everyone? And one Cadillac. Is that everyone? <laughs> you, wanted you wanted more? more? You wanted more? <laughs> yeah, I wanted more. More than what this bullshit was. <laughs> is this this universe where this movie gets made? Oh, God, I hope not. If I tell you, it won't happen. This isn't the one. This is the real end game. This is what this actually is. Oh, my is. God. Burm, 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 burm. <laughs> so, anyway. Oh, um, my God. Imagine the Avengers theme playing so over here this. Here we go with the plot twist of the movie. Cheatham, Dewey, and Howe, it turns out, are actually a law firm. Law firm and so, naturally, are out... Accolades of chaos. They because arranged the war between the two queens to create the chaos they craved. Trouble was, the two forces were too equally balanced. A third force had to be introduced, hence the summoning of Dazzler and company. With the defeat of Lord Chaos, now there will be peace. Until the Fire Nation attacks. <laughs> until and so, Nation attacks. <laughs> ironically, the prophecy was fulfilled. The Sun Queen and her knights indeed unite the two realms. Yeah. Lenny finds a natural partner in Squiggy, and for the first time in their lives together, they're funny. So, like, just to recap, Dazzler's whole thing in this was to end a cat fight. That was all she did. Cheatham, Dewey, and Howe, the three Roddy Dangerfields, are put to work as kindergarten teachers to learn what true chaos is. And so the Avengers, Spider-Man and Dazzler, prepare to be sent back in time. Dazzler is cold towards Tristan since she feels used by him. He has been found guiltless by the queens because he was in control of Lord... He was in the control of Lord Chaos until the end, but none of the women can quite forget being... Can, can, Quite forget being deceived. Tristan is brokenhearted. He swears to the Dazzler that his love for her was real. He picks up, he picks for her a big, beautiful flower and asks her to keep it as a token of his love. In the end, she believes and forg forgives him just as she, Spider Man, and the Avengers fade back in time, thanks to the Witch Queen's magic combined with the Queen of Fire's magic energies. Tristan watches her fade, tear fade out tearfully, then says, Oh well. He straightens his collar, dusts off his jacket, picks a be big, beautiful flower, and heads off towards the Witch Queen. The end. So Robin Williams picked Cher over Bo Derek. But yeah, so <laughs> like as, if you can't tell, 
this, this was a is, mess. This is some drug fueled shit like, right here. This is like 3 a.m. Let me write the most batshitly crazy fanfic I can think of. Yeah, like, I can't believe... I didn't know this was real. I, I thought, when you when I found out about this... Cause yeah, no, because you said this to me first. I found out about this through Wikipedia on canceled Marvel projects. Because, again, I lost media, canceled Which, stuff. It's always been an issue. To be mind. fair, we might we and might so, go back to that and look at for so more projects. So I mentioned projects. it to him, and he's like, there was a Dazzler movie? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And it got canceled. I didn't know there was a script out there, so I Googled it thinking, okay, maybe there's a script somewhere, something, and storyboard. Unfortunately, all we could find I was a treatment. And I found the treatment, and I read it, and I was like, what the fuck like, is this? Especially because, like, this is supposed to be a Dazzler film. Dazzler does nothing for most of this movie. She basically sits around and, is, and flirts with Robin Williams. Yeah, this, like, this, this movie like, is, like, awful. Th like, this would have actually made Bo Derek's uh, Xanadu look better by comparison. <laughs> like... The, the fact that the Marvel heroes do almost nothing. Like, this was so... Spider-Man is so underpowered in this. Well, to be fair, you they couldn't have done a lot with his powers. Oh, yeah, I and mean, it's the 70s, but still, like, it... But, like, the, the whole thing, honestly, is... If anything, I I hesitate to say it's, it's ahead of its time and what they could have done, but at the same time, there ain't no way in hell this movie would get made oh, past yeah, the no. 70s. Especially because, like... It's 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 one of those movies that it's it's all about getting these musicians to act like that really kind of fell out of style uh, by the eighties that fell out of style. I, I actually say for the most nineties. Um, but like like this was this was so much more for like all these bigger actors like like the fact that Dazzler who would have been played by Bo Derek doesn't get to like only gets to sing at the beginning would have been and to be fair I, it is a treatment. Like clearly, like this would have gone through a lot of rewrites and like script editing before this they actually been, this had a finished script. This would have been in script. development hell for like three years. Oh, probably more than that. I, I, I couldn't. Like, and the, and the, and the other problem Imagine is imagine the budget for this thing. Oh no, especially because like it would have been like it probably would have been as much as like the Batman one. Yeah, it's like the '89 Batman film, which I think at the time was one of the biggest budgets for a movie ever done. Yeah, like, it's just my, especially as, my God, this as, this thing is. This is a mess. And and we haven't even really talked about the most inherent problem with with doing this film. It, it's so focused on disco, especially with Dazzler. And this was 79. Disco was pretty was, much was dead dying. at that yeah, point. It was dying at this point. Like it, it was on life support basically. You know, like 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 like, like the Sega CD. <laughs> I believe at this point as well they'd actually had the thing in New York. Did you ever hear about the night disco died where they they brought it's called, it's called Disco Destruction Night, where they they rented out. I think it was Yankee Stadium, and they brought all these disco records into this big trash can, and they lit it up. And <laughs> blew, I'm talking, blew it the hell up, and it led to a riot. Oh my god! Like look, like look this up sometime. This 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 is how hated disco was at that point, man. Which uh, which I'm like, for the record, you probably shouldn't have done that when when Harlem was the way it was in the seventies. Especially not, not only that, seven like late seventies, early eighties New York, which was a hellscape at the time. Like, you know, like if you if you go to New York now, it actually looks it's it looks and is pretty nice. Like, like I mean to quote Rob Zombie, he he watched somebody get murdered the first time he the first day he was in New York. He watched somebody get fucking murdered. Yeah. Like 80s New or like 80s and 70s New York was basically Gotham City. Like not not being a joke, it literally was pretty much Gotham City. Nah, so Ex except all um, the clowns were in were in the uh, the mayor office the mayor's office instead yeah. of being in the asylum. Um, like I said, there's not a whole lot to go off of based on the treatment, but um, my but, whole my my thoughts on it are just that. This thing's a mess. Obviously, it would have gone through a lot of uh, rewrites and but different like, treatments. But in, in the state it's in right now, it, it, holy I, I, hell. I can see why this didn't get made. Yeah. Um, especially because, like, even if it I'd be did, interested to see if it was, like, a comic. Kind of yeah. like what they've done with some stuff recently. It'd be kind of cool to see it, it like It would that. be kind of cool. Um, cause I, like, it probably wouldn't make a whole lot more sense. Yeah, it, uh, it's kind of like the, um, that graphic novel I read that was made on, like, the original script of RoboCop 2. Like, it was literally called Frank Miller's RoboCop 2. Um, which that, oh my God, that, that book was weird. I've only ever read it once. Cause I was like, this is weird. And I'm putting this away somewhere. <laughs> um, but you know, as someone who like, I, I can see a lot of problems. The first being because of the fact that comic books were not as popular, like the Marvel heroes would have probably been so pushed out of the way for like kiss and the village people and Cher and Donna Summers and Bo well, Derek. I just think like what audience are they going for with this? I, I don't know. 
It was so like, especially because like, and the, the other problem it is like, it really reminds me of the Star Wars holiday special. It really does. If this would have been made, it would have been made for the cheap for one. Especially because like, I, 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 like the Marvel characters would have probably been done like in Halloween costumes. There's no way they would have put a they lot. They probably would have reused them. footage from uh, the Hammond show. As oh well. yeah, they would have. They probably actually they probably would have recycled the Spider Man costume. I could see them recycling it. Um. I don't know what they would have done for some of the effects, like, I, like the, like the, the mo like especially like, like uh, Wasp. Like, could you imagine trying to do her shrinking abilities in the seventies or early eighties? Oh my god, it, they would have had to have done. Uh, did you ever hear uh, of a TV show called Land of the Giants? <clears throat> I think I've heard of that. They probably would have had to do stuff like that. Oh god, they would have had to done like early blue screen. Oh, that yeah. would have been so bad. Like for those of you who've watched like movies with early blue and green screen, it's. It's a it, trip. It, it, oh. It's a trip. Because, like, they... they you can see the outlines. <laughs> oh, the, the, like, like some of the best... like Because, like, and I'm sure from someone here would probably be like, what about Disney's live-action Jack and the Beanstalk? They drew all that around the actors. That that was not blue screen or green. That, like, they drew that around. Like, like if you've ever seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit, they animated around the actors. They, like, because, like, this was before Who Framed Roger Rabbit. So, like, doing effects like this would have been... It was unthought of. Yeah, you know, they would have looked at you like you're nuts. Like most of them would have basically had light powers, like like Star Wars, um, like Star Wars. Like it would like especially Iron Man. Like Iron Man would have looked terrible. Oh, he would look. He would especially because he he would have looked cloth. Like well, imagine Beast. Oh, oh my God. The, the, well, to be fair, Chewy Chewbacca looked pretty good back then. Yeah, but that's but, well. That's well, yeah, not, but they probably would have had more. Chewy's budget, not as you? muscular as Beast is. Well, true. Um. But like, I, I mean, to be fair, I don't know who you would have even, like who would have even we even we would have even gotten for the Marvel characters. I don't oh, know. I don't even. They want probably to would have been bit players, sadly, it, with the exception of maybe Spider Man, because they could have just got Nicholas Hammond. They yeah, they could have just got Nick come back. But but like for 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 reference, Iron Man, um, looked like this in in comics that or not not that not that that's it's MCU. Yeah, damn, like, he, he looked, looked like back this. Then. Could you imagine? There's no way in hell they like, would have been able to do that with 70s tech. There is no damn like, way I, in hell. Like, I feel like they probably would have tried. Like, yeah, no. Like, it would have looked like cloth. Cloth and plastic, it probably. Like that, it would have looked like a 70s Captain America movie. It really would have. Like, like I, I, I'm also, I'm honestly, sh like, that's probably why they didn't do Cap. Because, like, they're, like th those Cap movies are bad. <laughs> those are bad. Um, you can get them on oh. Blu-ray now. <laughs> Which I don't understand why they look. They would look nobody like shit. wants shit on DVD anymore. It's got to be blue. I man. know, I know. I just <laughs> like, like I, I, I'm more that guy. I'm like, maybe we could not spend huge amounts of money for Blu-ray. I don't even think they they spend. I don't even think they I spend know. a lot of money. They probably just transferred them and just yeah, slammed them on there. I know, I know. Um, like, like, cause like. It just would it would have been a mess. Like I like I imagine it would look, it would have looked like Xanadu. Like have you seen the effects in yeah, Xanadu? I've seen Xanadu. Sadly, I, I which is so f sad because I love as someone who actually loves Fred Astaire. Like seeing this old man, and I think one of the last roles he did for film before his death. Like it's oh, it's such a pain to sit through. Yeah. So like, what are what are your kind of final thoughts on this whole uh, this whole ordeal? For one, I, I, for being how ambitious it was, I, in my opinion, it, it would have been really want tampered down from what we would have gotten. For one, I, I almost guarantee they wouldn't have gotten Kiss or the Village People. They would have probably just made the Dreadnoughts, and they, they probably would have been analogs of Kiss and the Village People. Um, I think a lot of it would have hinged on um, what the budget was, a especially if Casablanca was involved. Budget. The the budget they probably could have gotten both of those groups to show up. Yeah. Same with like Donna yeah. Summer and Chair. The problem would have been you know, like you know, how long would they have been in it, and well, would there and, have been any music in it? And or not? the other, because if it, yeah, because I could see, I could have seen Casablanca trying to get an album out of this. Oh, totally. Um, I, especially because they they probably would have had much more Dazzler involvement. Like, like <clears throat> it's amazing how little Dazzler's in the script. Like, or this treatment, like, she is no, almost nowhere to be found, and this was, like, her debut role. Like, and not only that, again, the plot hinges on her being the Queen of the Sun. Yeah. And she does... Nothing. Nothing. She sits around on the field, on the, the, the forest in the green, or the, the tavern on the green, and does pretty much nothing. <laughs> like, it's amazing how little she does. 
Yeah. Spider-Man does more than her, and he's only there to pull a key off a wall. Yeah, so... Um, but, like, bottom line, like, for me, if this treatment were in front of me and I was, like, a producer, I'm like, okay, first of all... No. You gotta cut down some of this. Like, even if, like even with a big budget, we couldn't do all this. Like, just because of the technology of the time would not have allowed a lot of it to look good. Yeah. Um, we're gonna have to pare it down... Um, probably less of the Marvel characters and try in, uh, Casablanca, are you willing to get all these actors and musicians? musicians? And, you know, I'm, I'm sure Casablanca would have said yes. And more than likely it would have just been a Dazzler film with probably almost none of the Avengers or Spider-Man. It Basically. would have been Dazzler. And it probably would have even been the Dazzler we know. It would have been a, a like a, a different version. It probably would have been that, like, cause like her outfit's pretty easy. It's just a disco. It's just a disco yeah. suit and a and a and a disco ball necklace. <coughs> oh, and roller skates, because those are important. Yes. Um, it probably would have basically gone to be just Dazzler, and probably Sharon Donna Summer, um, and of course Rodney. And bro, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I, I almost don't think they would have done uh the Lord, the Lord of Chaos like they did. Um, if anything, it would have just been the Lord of Chaos changing costumes and implied that he can be in three places at once. Let less of him being on screen. Cause like the, <clears throat> for those of, for anyone who, who knows like the, the, the remake of the parent trap, how they had to do that. You basically had to shoot the film like three times to get all the footage to duplicate Lindsay Lohan like that. More than likely, he would have just shown him, like, flipping through, like, all of his, uh, like, his different co- disguises until he's, like, wearing, like, a Lord of Chaos outfit. <clears throat> um, I also think they probably would have gotten a different actor to play the Lord of Chaos. Like, I, I feel like some, like, the, the production company would have been like, we need, like, an actual villain person. Probably Al Pacino. Don't mess with me, Avengers. I'm talking about a fucking Cadillac that you owe me. me. You owe me six thousand dollars <laughs> and one Cadillac. and one Cosmic Cube. A one Cosmic Cube. One Tesseract. <laughs> one Tesseract. You owe me one um, Tesseract. You company but, man. But yeah, like, cause like, I really feel like this because oh, of how D- Doug's gonna lose his yeah. mind when he hears this. Because seeing how ambitious this film was, there, there, there's no way they would have had all the Avengers. No, there's no way because they, they just. Not only would it have been impractical, yeah. I just don't think they would have used them in comparison to everybody else. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, so, like, in summary, like, I, like this movie would have been interesting, but at the same time... Not th- very good. Not very good. We probably wouldn't have seen these Avengers. Like, those would have probably been dropped, like, the first script draft, probably. Um, they may have kept Spider-Man, maybe. I, like, it maybe made it a Spider-Man Dazzler piece. I actually could see them replacing Tristan with Spider-Man. I could see that. Like, but, but I don't know if I want Robin Williams to be Spider-Man. Oh, dear Christ. That would have been... That would have been That would have been a trip. Uh, that would have been... I mean, to be fair, he'd be hilarious as Spider-Man. Yeah, that would have been, that would have been a trip, though. But. Um, but yeah, like... And, and obviously today it would not have gotten made. Because d- no, A, Disco no is no. dead... And B, we just don't have that that big name of musicians to really pull from for any of this. You know what I mean? You know, we could have gotten um, a, a Billie Eilish as one of the queens. Oh my god! And she could have made a joke about Duh. this. And Spider and Spider Man could be there, and she could make a joke about putting him in her mouth. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! You realize that's gonna date this episode <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Like, not even a year from now. Oh, that's going to date this episode. Not the fact that we're talking about a treatment of a movie from the 70s. Or me bringing up... Me bringing up... <laughs> of Weekend, weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> All right, but... You know, this is like... We've talked about this this for an over an hour. Um, oh, yeah. The link... the I'll, I'll link the, the, the page from Jim Shooter's blog down in the description. Because I think it also comes with the script PDF. It does. It comes with the PDF. You know, there's some background of him talking about it. Um, just, you know, to read it for yourself. Cause I mean, we really glossed over it. You know, yeah. it's, it's only 14 pages. It's a pretty quick read if you ever want to like give it a go, but <clears> it's, it's a, it's a treatment. Yeah. It's something. It, it, it's, it's, it's certainly some, it's some something. Fanfic. It's it some is great certainly fanfic. something. But. Um, so yeah, guys, I think that's going to wrap it up for this, uh, Raiders of the Lost Script. I kind of feel like we'll probably do this like maybe like at the end of the month uh, of months. Yeah. Um, probably we not do every, we do that Hulk <clears throat> script next. Hulk script? There's like three Hulk scripts they've never made. Oh. We'll, we'll think of something. Like, we'll probably go back to that Marvel thing. Um, I, I kind of want to see if maybe we could try to... Since we did Marvel this time, maybe we'd try to do a DC one, because I kind of want to... that would be good. I kind of want to do Batman Triumphant. 
I, I, or even I, do like the Superman. Superman ooh, lives. Ooh, Superman, Superman lives. lives. Would have been great. The cage. Um, but I kind of want to say Superman lives for something really. Im- yeah, for that, some really that, big that, thing. That thing is so interesting in and of itself yeah, that it's worthy of its own. That, it's almost worthy of its own thing. Then to be fair, I kind of want to do Batman Triumphant just because like not a lot of people know about Batman Triumphant. Yeah. So um, we t- I think we talked about it briefly in our retro. Yeah, but we've never done a full. We we could talk about it for a whole episode. Really, um, there's, there's a lot going on with that. But, but like I said, guys, this isn't going to be like. In every event, like this is kind of like I want I want to have something for this like is, this is our giant size annual. Yeah, more or less. Um, next week I'm not sure what we're planning on doing next week. Um, do we want to <clears> talk? Ab- no, do you remember we're going to talk about a, uh, a certain movie that came out? Oh recently, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, certain, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 Oscar nominee and Academy yes, Award winner. Yes, yes, we I forgot we we uh, with a special guest. Uh, yeah, we're hopefully. gonna have a, we're gonna have a special guest next week. <laughs> hope, so hopefully this time when we record it, it doesn't <laughs> yeah. it doesn't he, er, he was, uh, erase itself. He was a, he was our guest in um mm. really our first lost episode. Yeah. So um, like I said, I, for we're not going to reveal what movie that is, but I mean, if you. You probably it, already know what it is by us saying, saying like Oscar, uh, yeah, Oscar, Oscar nominated and Academy Award winner, but plus knowing what we usually talk about on the show. So anyway, but guys, I think, then, as always, we ask you remember, remember the, the hyphen. hyphen. Take, Take care. care. We should have like.